can use the skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. Well, I don't have any text that I've already read, game, so thank you. But no thank you. Alright guys, I'm back. It's been like 20 minutes. You know what, I'm just gonna finish the game today, because apparently it's a rather short game, so... Let's just get all of this done. I wouldn't say and over with, because, well, you know, it, I'm actually enjoying myself. Alright. Hmm. What do I want to do for the third one? Cry. Um... Silly. Uh, electricity. Anxiety. Mm. Tragedy. Uh, misery. Vitality. I'm not like choosing any of her words. I feel so bad. Um, loud. I'm just gonna go with every word that just feels right to me. Waterfall. Destiny. Tone. Hopeless. Agonizing. Love. Memories. Melody. Broken. Disown. Suicide. Oh man, Petra, the fuck are you doing? Shush. Trying to read the visual novel, you gotta shut the fuck up. My dog's gonna do it. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, now practice or er, picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't all for me. Er, yeah, remember the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're willing to help out for the festival, too. Oh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where you get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sari all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica? Huh? That, that, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? <laughs> Where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. Wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Uh, ah, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sure, he shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Oh, all right. If you say so. 
I worriedly glance at Siri before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed, and with everyone back at their usual activities, maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siri recently, since they've been preparing for the festival. They must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. And this what's up. It was, might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sarah recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? Can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her cheek. Maybe there's something else on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the only, or not the one asking you, Abyssal. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything. I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? You sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? I mean, she just... Or she... Yeah, just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Abyssal. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sari talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra weight was turned on inside her. Or an extra light, jeez. Let's turn on inside of her. What? No way. Sarah is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it's always or than it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Abyssal. I don't know why I read it so fucking like weird, but anyway. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. So just forget you, or you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so don't think about it for now. Uh, alright. Chronicle smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. Watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. That's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? That I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now that it feels like I'm the only one behaving out- Now it feels like I'm the only one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, or I know it, everything's back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Siori. Hmm. Alright, 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 alright. So here's where I'm gonna change things up a bit. Because Monica's last poem worried me a bit. So I'm gonna start with Monica. I'm gonna make Natsuki last this time, as much as that makes me feel bad. Um, and I'll go Monica, Sari, Yuri, Natsuki. Or go Sari and cheer up. Uh, I could just not make Monica last, so we'll do that. This is your best one so far. It's really, really nice, Abyssal. Uh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Sarah, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything all right? Uh-huh. Of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Uh-huh. Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I want—I only want to see smiles on your face. Oh, all right. Hey, Abyssal. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you'd try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this the mo one the most. Why? You don't want to get any cl or you don't want to get closer with everyone else. Wait. Of course I do. 
doesn't mean I need to try hard so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sari. I know you have some... Nah. I know you have to put up... Or some, or to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one exciting... Or the only exciting thing in my life. Sometimes it's just easier to write than think, when thinking about you. Sari? No, no, imbecile. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sorry, I has trouble keeping your voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori? I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Abyssal. Just a little rain cloud. Sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. She just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sorry. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sorry cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hi, Abyssal. Have you thought about what you want to submit to the performance or to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, performing in front of a bunch of people. I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. I would also like or it would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'm not gonna take the poem I'm holding in my hand. <laughs> it's kinda funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately. I didn't even read her poem today. I guess you could say that. I kind of grew up as best friends. I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me. How about Sayori, or about how Sayori's been a little off today? Yeah, did she tell you something? Ah. <sighs> Well, Crystal, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of, of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It'd be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sarah's been acting so much happier ever since you joined that club. That was a bit ominous. Was something bad happened to her? What the fuck are you talking about? Could have happened all of a sudden. Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway... I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. Then all else has failed me. When all, the, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I, er, I fall and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. I don't know why, but that one gave me, like, chills and goosebumps. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers to those sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too, too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. 
never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? I said something similar the other day, dude. Wow. Son of a bitch. You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Huh, honey? Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's that it's or, yeah afraid it's no good? Or something like that. I can't read. What the fuck am I doing? Hang on. <laughs> Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Monica's an interesting fella. Well done, Abyssal. You've definitely approved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend time, or spend some personal time with all girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself, well, have you learned anything about yourself, Abyssal? Eh? Well, you know, I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always so sophisticated with your writing. You have the most advice to share. Is that so? Here, thanks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Huh? For me to have to become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri, what, what am I saying? Sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. You want to show your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clean blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. Enigma, sorry, I said that wrong. I said it weird, I guess. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward. And I return to Earth forevermore. That's deep. Jesus. Um... I'm aware that the beach is kind of a name thing to write about. But I did my best to make, or to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say like that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing 
that we wrote about something similar in such different ways, so Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. So I posed to better compare the differences in our writing styles, or thought processes. Either way, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. <laughs>